Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman. I am your GPR professor from LearnGPR.com, a division of Big Man Geophysical. And today I'm going to do a video that I was, Clay versus Sand is the name that I'm going with. But really I wanted to call the video Why I Love Using GPR in Clay. So this is probably going to get a lot of heat from some people, but, you know, unfortunately what we generally have out there is a situation where we pit clay against sand, and I'm definitely guilty of this too, and we say, you know, smiley face on this side, and sad face on this side. I mean, I have literally put this into a slide before. However, it's not fair, all right? It's okay, Clay, it's okay. Uh, we're gonna clear everything up in this video today because Clay gets a bad rap. Now, I'm not saying that Clay is all roses and it's all peachy and Clay is great to work in. There are problems working in Clay, but equally so there are problems working in sand and there is no good or bad, it just is, okay? There is no value statement here. Um, some of the problems of clay may outweigh, it's your personal opinion, the problems of sand. I think it depends on what the context is. But what I want to do with this video is give a balanced review, finally, of the differences in using GPR when working in these two conditions. And so we'll kind of see where these faces end up by the end of the video. So, a couple things here, right? What can we consider then uh, between these? Well, in which case, right, is uh, 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 depth, right? So, depth. Generally, clay is going to be a shallower depth for any given antenna frequency, and sand will be greater depth, okay? So, let's say shallow and greater. Okay, why is that? Two major reasons. Number one, sand has a higher wave velocity. Uh, and then it also, uh, um, right, and so here we have, it's slower. And then here it's generally less conductive. And here generally more conductive. And so slower wave velocities and greater conductivity are going to limit how deep any given antenna is going to look in this case. Okay. Okay, so that's just that's depth I'm looking there. Um, what else can we consider? Okay, how about resolution, right? So what do we mean by resolution? Wave Length. So wavelength will drive the size of the object that you can see, and that is going to be different for these two different contexts using the same antenna. So in this case, we actually have um, shorter wavelength, longer wavelength, which means higher resolution, lower resolution. Or you can break it down this way. The same antenna can see a smaller object or target uh, in clay than the antenna could in sand. It has to be a larger uh, target. Purely based on wavelength. Okay? Purely based on wavelength. So, most people say, well, but you know, it doesn't go as deep. Well, if it's shallow enough, and I can see it, I live in northern Georgia in the United States. We have high clay-rich soils that are all wet, so problematic, as most people would say. However, we're able to see really small objects in the top two, three, four feet that may get overlooked in another context because we have very short wavelengths up here, and for the same given antenna frequency, shorter wavelengths, Better resolution, smaller targets. 
Check for clay and X for sand. Okay, what else? How about your ability to push a GPR cart in clay versus sand? Okay, well, I'd probably say even in both of them, wet or dry, uh, but certainly dry is a, uh, um, we'll say data uh, collection ability. Okay, data collection ability. We have check X. So if you've ever tried to push a GPR cart in pure sand, dry sand, it's very difficult. There's no consistency in the way your wheel turns. Um, you'll get stuck in the sand. You'll glide on the sand without your odometer turning. That's a real problem. So, um, you know, consistent. And inconsistent. And I may have misspelled it, by the way. I always lost the spelling bee growing up. And then I've always relied on uh, Microsoft Word Correct or whatever. And so I'm not a great speller. But consistent versus inconsistent. So that's a plus for clay as far as data collection ability. Um, it, if you've never worked in sand, go ahead and, you know, and if you always complain and you say, why am I in clay? Why don't I have sands? Those people in Florida or those people in Perth or those people, whatever, you know, have great contexts, okay, to work GPR. Go push a GPR cart in dry sand and you may have a very different opinion about that. Um, okay. How about data clarity? I think that sand has this one um, because the soils themselves tend to be more consistent. Okay? Right, so inconsistent uh, wheel turn. You get stuck. That's over here. It's consistent wheel turn. Um, soils themselves. Here, actually more, better to say it is this would generally be more homogeneous, something like that. And this would be heterogeneous. So consistent. Inconsistent. We tend to get, I've seen, a lot of times we'll maybe get more scattered here than over here. So consistency is helpful. Data clarity can be better. Uh, uh, you know, certainly here is what we tend to find compared to clay, especially wet clay, which clay tends to be uh, because it retains that water. So as it currently sits, you know, they're equal. Okay, sand, two checks, two X's, clay, two checks, two X's. Um, something important, and I'll have to go ahead and erase this. Actually, let me grab a sip of water first. So to erase this, but here's what's critical, okay, context, I should get this up here, clay, sand, Okay, if I'm looking for trenches, pipe trenches, okay, trenches, see here. Just check for clay and X for sand. Why? This is uh, consolidated soil matrix and Unconsolidated soil matrix. So what does it mean? If I'm looking for a trench or a grave shaft or a utility, you know, a, a, a excavation unit, whatever. Bigger contrast in clay 
smaller contrast often in sand because the sand is unconsolidated just like the trench soil is or the grave shaft soil. Doesn't mean you can't see it, but you'll get a more subtle reflection where over here uh, you get a much uh, you know, bigger difference between, let's say, a road base and a trench. You go from hot, for, you know, you get, you get uh, um, you know, little contrast going from road base to that trench, but from the road base to consolidated soil clay matrix, you get a big response. So those trenches are easy to see. Maybe I'll do a video where I actually give an example of the data. Um, where over here, the trenches are more difficult to see. They're more difficult because you just get a recessed uh, um, uh, response. Same thing actually, voids. Um, you know, voids. I would say it's X and it's a check. Okay, so now we're coming this way. We did a project recently, all right? And if you need support with your projects, by the way, then you can go ahead to uh, bigmangeophysical.com or learngpr.com, reach out to us, and we can support your projects. So a customer of ours we supported, they were looking for voids underneath a slab at an industrial site, but the slab was on sand. In this case, the back of the slab was really recessed, and the voids were really dramatic because there was a big difference between the voids and the slab, but a small difference between the sand and the clay. I'm sorry, between the, the, the slab and the sand. And so we saw that difference. Whereas in clay, you get a big response going from slab to clay, and you get a big response going from slab to voids. So it could be more difficult. Now you can use polarity here. We did a whole video on polarity, go check it out. Um, but in some cases, it could be easier to find the voids, I think, in, in, the, in, in this situation. So it just depends. It depends. Um, how about finding water pipes? Uh, X, check. Why? Because clay, or at least saturated clay, um, has going to have a much more subtle response looking for a pipe with water. Non-metallic pipe with water. Sand is going to be a much bigger contrast, easier to do. Okay, how about a pipe filled with air? It's going to be easier in the clay and it could be more difficult in the sand. Okay, why is that the case? I don't know why I put a zero there, but... Uh, because the sand and the air are more similar to each other, whereas the clay and the air are more of a contrast with each other. And so GPR looks at contrast. So it all depends. So what do we have here? I did not pre-think this out, by the way. So this is just on the fly as I'm thinking about it. But check, check, right? two checks, two X's, two checks, two X's. So it's still equal. It's still equal. All right? So then where's, what's better to work in, right? Which is worse? Which is better or worse to work in? Well, let's go back to our smiley faces real quick. Which is better or worse to work in? Well, in some situations, you're going to get a sad face here, and you'll get a smiley face here. But in other situations, in some, but in others, you actually will have a smiley face for clay and a sad face for sand. What's the point? The point is, don't be beholden to what other people's complaints and negativity are. Do not be negative, okay? You are lucky to be working in geophysics and GPR and utility locating and, and so forth and concrete scanning and whatever, okay? Structural engineering, civil engineering, geology, archaeology. We're all really lucky to be working in this industry. It's a wonderful industry. Industry we get to solve problems every day. We are the superheroes of the modern era. And if you know what you're talking about and you understand the fundamentals, and if you don't understand them, you should come to our workshops or do our online trainings. But if you understand the fundamentals and you recognize, it's all context. Clay is worse in some cases and actually better in other cases. 
People have, this is maybe the first time you ever heard that clay is better in some cases with GPR compared to sand. We've spoken to distributors who said, eh, I don't sell any GPR here because it doesn't work in my area because we have clay. I have made a career in a location that's filled with water-saturated clay. It works, and sometimes it works best in clay, depending on what you're looking for or, or what you're trying to do. So it's all contextual. Uh, know what you're getting into before you get into it. Um, don't be sad if you work in clay. We, we all kind of work in clay at some point. And just know what to expect. And if it's going to be one of these days, which you have them, make sure you communicate those issues to the customer. But make sure you also communicate to them why they still have to use GPR on their site. It cannot be over. You, you can't remove that from the toolkit. There are some things that only GPR can find. Even if it can't find it that day on that site with those environmental conditions, it's the only tool who has a possibility to find some things. So they have to use it. But make sure that you show them the problems and you, you communicate those with them. On the other hand, go into it thinking, how can I make, even though I'm working clay, a day like this? Right? What am I looking for? What's the right thing? What's the contrast that we can find? Can't find the pipe? It's too deep. My signal has faded. Well, maybe I can find the trench. It's easier to find a trench often in clay uh, than, than it is in, in sand. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps give you a perspective. If I missed something here, please put it in the comments below. I know we didn't go into too much technical detail, but I want to give an overview of why I love clay, or really why you know, they're both your friend and they're both your enemy. It just depends uh, uh, what you're searching for, what the conditions are, what the scope of the project is. And so I hope this was helpful. I hope this reorganizes your head around uh, uh, you know, your project conditions and things like that, and you have a good attitude going into it. So uh, hit the like button, put a comment below, make sure you go to learngpr.com, put your name and email address in, and get access to our free introductory training video over there that we made for you. And uh, we're just here to help. If you have projects that you want to get support on, then reach out to us, because we are happy to help support your projects. We do field support, we can do data, backend data support, train your people, whatever. We want to help you however we can. So good luck and let us know.